Hey guys, how's it going? I'm out in the greenhouse today and I'm working on a little arrangement that I thought you might like to see. Uh, just because this type of container used to intimidate me big time. Like I used to see rectangle containers and not really know where to start or how to begin it or whether or not I should put a centerpiece in or do everything kind of the same height. And um, so I thought I would show you how I'm gonna put it together today. I'm gonna be using this one, which was actually a custom built container. I put together a succulent arrangement in this one last summer, so you might remember seeing that video. But um, before I decided to use this, I brought a couple of other examples or options out, I guess, um, because I wasn't sure how big I wanted to make it. So this container I got at, I think, Joanne Craft Store last summer as well. And I think this is a little small for where I wanna put it. And then there are, of course, lots of different terracotta options that are skinnier, um, because this type of container, I think, works really well in a few different applications. So like for an outdoor dining situation, like a centerpiece, I think it's really a great shape, especially if you've got like a picnic table or a rectangular shaped table. I think they're good on like porch railings. And you know, like I said, you can get skinnier options if you've got a skinnier railing or if you've got a bigger railing, you could get away with something like this. Um, we also have an outdoor fireplace that has a mantle. And I thought I would actually try this arrangement on the mantle first, but I might use it on our patio table as well. So I'm gonna kind of design it with both of those things in mind. So I already put my soil in here and this container does have drainage holes. There are three, there's one in the middle and then two on each side. And then I did decide to go ahead and use a centerpiece. So something a little bit taller. Um, and that's what used to always throw me off because like if you put a centerpiece in here and then you've got a ton of other space, do you need to do something else that's tall right here? Um, and so it just always kind of was one of those things that was like, always made me nervous. Um, now I'm a little bit more practiced. I think that's what kind of helps is just doing them over and over again. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this. This is a Gra Graceful Grasses Toffee Twist Carex. And I think that this grass pretty much, like this is the epitome of fall in a grass. I think it's really pretty. So this is going right in the center. And I'm gonna pack this planter out, you guys, because it's fall. I mean, we're getting toward the end of September here. Um, we're not gonna need to, I'm like not expecting to enjoy this container for months and months and months. So I think um, just packing it out and just enjoying it for the next month and a half or so that we have left of nicer temperatures, it'll be fine. The plants will be fine being packed in close together because they're not gonna be growing a whole lot. Right now in Eastern Oregon, we're like mid to high 70s still. So I do expect to have, you know, quite a bit more nice days, but not a ton. Okay. So the next thing I wanna do is provide a little bit of a spiller right here to kind of soften the height that I've got going on. So I'm gonna use a lemon coral sedum. Love this plant. I think it's a zone seven though. It's not hardy in my zone five growing zone, but they make a really excellent house plant. So last year I brought a bunch of them in. I did have them under grow lights, uh, but they did fantastic. I mean, they put on a ton of growth. So um, really quick, I'm gonna remove a bunch of soil. So see that right there? I remove a ton of soil. These plants are really resilient. That way I can squeeze it in in between the root ball and the side of the container here. Kind of like that. Pack some soil in around its roots. I really hope I picked center on this container. I think I did. Really bad at picking center. I'm also really bad at hanging pictures, <laughs> getting them right. All right, so I'm gonna put one on the back side as well. Cause like I said, I might be using this in a dining situation so I want it to look the same all the way around I don't want it to have a back so this one will go in on this side that already looks really really pretty okay so the next plant I want to use is actually not technically a fall plant um, because they don't take frost very well but I had a couple of them left I thought you know what I'm gonna put them in here anyway so this is a bewitched after midnight potato vine I thought the contrast of color would be a really nice transition right there. And then, you know, once the frost takes it, I can go in with some scissors or pruners and just cut it off at soil level. And I'm putting so many other things in here that I don't think we'll even miss it. So that goes in next. And that looked pretty. I think just these three in a small round container would be perfect. So one on the other side. They're a little bit different sizes, but that's okay. So the next plant I wanna use, I think is, yeah, I wanna use a little color. So 
Supertunia black cherry. And this plant, Supertunias and Superbells both, are really great plants to use in the fall. So if you can get your hands on some, use them because they can take quite a bit of frost before you know they'll be done for the year. And mine typically do every bit as good as my pansies. They really can take quite a bit. So if you, like I said, can get a hold of some, grab them because they're great for fall containers. Just slide that in there. Okay, now the other side, basically just repeating everything on this side that I do on that first side. So here's another one, it looks beautiful. Okay, I'm loving how it's looking so far. I kind of lined plants up um, before I started putting it together just to see, but I wasn't sure. You never know until you start actually putting them in the container how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna move, remove a little bit of soil. I got a little bit too much in here. I'd rather have to take soil out than put it in though. I hate having to add extra soil in the middle of a project. So this right here is just an ornamental kale. Really pretty for fall. I always like to groom off any of the extra like yellow, anything that's yellowed out. So you can just go in and just pop them off like that. That's pretty clean. Okay. And this will provide weight. See how that instantly kind of like weights down the uh, arrangement. So you've got nice fluffy, really kind of um, fun texture right there. And this kind of brings it down and, and kind of draws your eye down toward this end of the arrangement. Okay. So now we need to add a little bit more color and fluff. So the very last plant I'm gonna use on the end is this Dreamsicle Superbells. I think the red and the orange for this arrangement is perfect. Oh, it's so pretty. So make sure that there's soil around the root balls of all the plants. I kind of run my hand along the edge of the container and make sure that I didn't miss any spots. There's no air pockets in there. So the plants will stay happy. That's beautiful. And you know, if you guys can't find this type of um, flower right here, I'm hoping that garden centers catch on and start carrying these super tunias and super bells a little bit later in the season to give us a little bit more option for fall so that all of our fall containers don't always look the same. But you could definitely substitute pansies or mums or something like that for the color in this arrangement and it would be very pretty. I think it turned out super pretty. I love, love the color combination. I think it looks extremely fallish and beautiful. I'm not sure that I could have actually used a centerpiece in either one of those other containers. I don't think the size of it, like I think the proportion would have been wrong. And I think that this is still a ferny enough texture and it's short enough to where if we use it on the dining table, it won't be annoying. That's one thing to think about when you're doing a dining centerpiece. You don't want it to be too tall that you can't see the person across the table. All right, so I'm done with the arrangement. So now I'm gonna haul it around and try it in a couple different places, see where I like it. And we'll get some pictures to show you what it looks like. Centered. Looks pretty good. So this is the fireplace area and while I do like the scale of this arrangement here, it's like the perfect size, uh, I don't think it's going to get enough sun in this area to keep the plants happy. So I'm going to go try it in a different spot. I think if I were to leave it here, one, I'd have to choose a little bit different plants. And I think I would need to add some pumpkins and things, you know, like just some stuff to soften the sides. All right, so I'm gonna load it back up and we're gonna try it somewhere else. So this is the spot I ended up putting it and I think it works out really great because this is by our front door. I already had corn stalks up here, so it kind of fits that fall theme really nicely. And when we placed it earlier today, it was in full sun and it gets a good block of sun all day. So I think it'll keep the plants happy. Right now it's evening and so it's in more shade, but I did have to cut this burning bush down quite a bit in order to even see this arrangement because it was all the way up to here. Like it was enormous and out of control. So it actually forced me to kind of tame this down a little bit and I think the whole area looks a lot better. So let me talk about watering. So obviously this isn't the most ideal location to put a container because it's on a railing that's painted, a wood railing that's painted. So you don't want a lot of water or moisture contact on that wood because it can damage it. Um, so what I do, and if Aaron, if you wanna come up here, I'll show you guys. I use plastic either um, like the press and seal or you can use foil that actually works like probably the best if you use a double layer of foil but you can see that and it looks kind of bad uh, I wish I had a saucer that was the same size as this container but since this is a custom container you know you can't really find saucers to fit that so what I did is I put the container on the ground and laid out a long piece of the press and seal on the railing and then set the container back down and then just used a pair of scissors to kind of cut it flush with the container. As you get in really close, you can see it right here. 
See that? I prefer using a clear plastic. You can use like a, a thicker plastic. I just didn't have any here. I usually save like all my wrappings off of whenever we buy something that has the big plastic bags over it. I fold those up and save them because I use them for stuff like this. The other thing I do is I do not water it heavy ever. And being that it's fall and it's cooler outside, we won't have to water it as often, which is very helpful in this type of situation. But I typically only put in enough water to moisten the soil, not enough for it to run out the drain holes. So this plastic is kind of just like a fail safe, just in case a little bit of moisture makes it out of the container. That way it protects the wood a little bit. The other thing you could do, which is a huge pain in the butt, is to take this container off, water it, let it drain and bring it back up here. I don't typically like maintenance stuff like that, so I just try to protect the wood the best I can um, and then just water it lightly. So what I'll do is I just use a watering can for this, something that's really easy to control the water flow, and I'll just water in just nice and gently. No hoses for this type of thing because you can make a mess with hoses really easily. So that's probably good for that side. And I probably won't have to check this container for a couple of days, which is so nice. I love fall. I love that it's far less maintenance this time of year than it is when it's 100 plus degrees outside. So that's pretty much it. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this arrangement come together. And if you have uh, struggled with putting together arrangements in rectangular or odd shaped containers, I hope this maybe gave you guys some ideas. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.